the release of Embroidery Studio 3, there have been lots of new features, particularly around the multi-decoration um, area of our industry. Uh, the integration of Corel X6 into the Wilcom Embroidery Studio is a great feature which gives us uh, enormous power uh, when we're producing multi-decoration files. Now I'd like to go through our menus across the top here briefly and just hit on some of the high points before showing you how to set the, the work area up to produce embroidery and multi other multi-decoration designs. So under our file menu it's very similar to most other Windows based products. You can create new files, open them, save them, print them etc. We can also import files embroidery files or graphic files, both raster and vector. We can scan an image and place it directly on the screen here, ready for digitizing. But this is the new, uh, one of the, the brand new menu items within the software. We can export multi-decoration files. So in this case, we've got a bling file, a print file, and an embroidery file. So we can export each of those to the various programs that we might, might want to do further work on. And with our embroidery file, you can select from any any file that you choose. Um, looking further down our file menu, we can record into database if you've purchased the workflow database, which is a great asset. I'll do some work on that later. You can capture the design as a bitmap, send via email, etc., and send to your various machines, including a bling cutter, which is set up just like a normal printer. So you'd select the bling cutter from your drop down and send it to that to cut the little uh, accurate holes into to place the bling on your template and then uh, finally onto the garment. Okay, so that's the file menu. Oops, what did I do, the cancel printing? Okay, so our edit menu is, is similar to most others. You can cut, copy, cut, paste, select, etc. Transform, and, and we'll produce a shortcut toolbars for these and place them around the work area so you don't need to come back to these top menus uh, later on. The view toolbar, the same same thing there. We can view design properties, anything to do with the design or setting up our auto fabric assistant that will be under the design menu. Objects, arrange and we'll expose and arrange toolbar shortly. Functions, stitches, anything to do with generating stitches etc. But but you won't often come back to this area once you see how to set up the shortcut toolbars. Here's an interesting one, editing and cropping bitmaps. We've got uh, a lot more choice here now. We can crop in various shapes, for example, rectangle, oval, heart, stars, and curved shapes. And it's what we call a soft crop, so that if you make a an error in your first cropping, you can come back and recrop without having to uh, import the the image again. Okay, and here we can set up our, again, our auto fabric assistant, manage your hoops, manage motifs, calibrate your screen, etc. And we'll go into those detail in detail later. Under the window drop down, you can cascade those uh, windows that you're working on. You can tile them vertically or whatever. This, you can have as many files and you can drag and drop from one work area to another. So I'll just double click there, it'll bring us back to that original file again. And importantly for those that haven't used the software before, have a look at the help menu. There's a lot of great information here. There's an on-screen help that's available. Now the shortcut for that is F1. So if you're, if you're working on a particular um, object and you want some information on it, just hit the keyboard shortcut F1 and that embroidery uh, help file, uh, embroidery studio help will come up. Under help, we've got a, a user manual. Now, there's no longer a printed version of the manual, but there's about 1,100 page PDF file that describes everything associated with the software. So you can print that or just print out those sections that you're interested in. If you want to know more about embroidery lettering, just hit the plus sign and that will expand out and give you more information, sizes, etc. Okay, back to our help menu. Uh, you can register online or offline. Um, visit the Wilcom website and other training material. There are some useful links here. Uh, now, my product is a good one to visit. If you're not sure if you have a, a particular feature at, 
associated with your dongle or registered to your dongle select my products from the help menu and it will it'll tell you the dongle that you have registered uh, that is licensed to you and the features that are associated with that particular dongle so if there's a feature that you want and it's not displayed here uh, click on this link and it'll take you to the walk on web page and tell you how you can purchase the link and finally down here you can check for updates by clicking on this button of course you have to be on the internet but it'll check back with the Wilcom site and tell you if there are of uh, updates available for your software okay so there's no, no updates available for me now let's get down to our work area if I come back to this Windows drop down you'll see here that I can bring out my toolbars now the other way to do this if you don't want to come to the, the menu there is simply left or right click in the uh, sorry right click in the gray area where the menu bars will eventually uh, reside now if I right click beside those features that I want they will expose themselves and this drop down menu will remain open so I'm just going to select a few and we'll describe those okay so we'll just drag the header of these menus up into place and we'll put them wherever suits you so these are simply shortcuts that we're, we're are available under these drop down menus here but it's much quicker to have them exposed up here than it is to come to the menu and and work your way through to to find out to find the exact item that you're looking for if you don't want a toolbar because you know you're not going to use it just drag it down onto the screen and hit the x button or right click in here and turn off the shaping toolbar and it's gone okay so this is our main docker which will expose our uh, object properties and clip art docs and all that that usually re reside on the right hand side of our screen so we'll expose a few of those is our color object list our color palette editor and our object properties they're probably the three most common um, properties boxes or flyouts that are used when digitizing if I hit the safety the little uh, pin here that'll slide that property box off to the right hand side so it's available for you for you to use at, at a later date if I pin it down it will remain in place but with the pin sideways once I'm not using it it'll it'll fly away again if I hit the X it'll close it all together it won't fly back here I'll have to come back up here and open it up so that docker bar is handy to have out okay our, our color object list is like a road map of the design so it, it describes to us or shows us exactly what we've got in our work area here so I can see the um, the uh, vector images that we would print and then all of the objects in our embroidery file and the color of the object so we're looking at the ink pot here now and it describes the uh, the tool that was used to create the object and the stitch type so the main body of the ink ink well uh, was uh, created with complex fill and it's a tatami fill stitch and there are 458 stitches now for some reason we wanted to change the stitch type we can come under our fills button and change it from tatami to any one of these other stitch types or the shortcut key for that would be let's say we want to change it back to satin click the satin stitch icon and you can see that's changed it from tatami to satin stitch this is our arrange toolbar so we can align property uh, line objects to the left uh, 
under a vertical line or on a horizontal plane to the right to the top on a vertical plane to the bottom etc so let's now draw out some of our digitizing tools this is our main toolbox toolbar and you'll see at the bottom of, of most of them there's a little black triangle if we click on the black triangle it flies out and shows us the tools that are part of that select tool set so if I drag the grab handles out you'll see it's the select toolbar now I can either expose them that way or I can drag them back and have the whole toolbar open so we'll do that with our reshape toolbar as well get the grab handles drag it across and then drag it back to where we want it this is our, our uh, navigation toolbar or travel toolbar now the other way to expose these tools again is to right click up in the gray area come to the bottom to the toolbox flyouts and turn them on so we might want our auto digitizing our circle tools our column shape tools create special tools edit tools and you can see they're populating the left hand part of the screen here and from there we can just sort of move them to where where we want them just grab the grab handles the little six little dots on the top of each of these menu bars and you can move them to wherever they're required so I guess I'll finish the video here because this was just about setting up the um, the work area and, and not necessarily describing in depth what each of the tools do I'll, I'll cover that in a in another series but if you just remember that everything you need to do is under these these uh, file these menus at the top but it's much quicker if we expose the shortcut menus and place them where we want them now you don't have to have them open for every design you're doing you might only want to have those toolbars out that you're going to use for that particular design so the easy way to do that is, as I mentioned before, right click in the grey area and turn off those that you don't want and turn on those that you do want.